Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about why you may not be getting the clients that you want or booking weddings in general. So let's get started. What we're gonna be talking about today is why you might not be getting the type of clients that you want or why you're not booking weddings. And this, uh, hopefully this advice will apply to a lot of your other types of photography that you're doing. It doesn't have to be wedding specific. If you take these principles and apply it to any other type of area that you're doing, uh, it should work for you. But since I'm a wedding photographer, I'm gonna specifically talk about weddings and reference weddings. But again, it doesn't have to just specifically apply to weddings. If you're a headshot photographer or if you're family or maternity or newborn, all these type of principles will apply to your business. So the first reason that you might not be booking uh, weddings uh, or you're having a difficult time uh, booking that client is because you're displaying too much information online or different types of genres of photography. I should probably say that is you're, you're, you're displaying too much. And what I mean by that is that you're displaying uh, sports, architecture, uh, family, and you're also displaying weddings. So when you're marketing yourself on Google, Facebook, and Instagram, you're marketing yourself as a, a wedding photographer who also does maternity, family, um, sports, architecture, and landscapes. And uh, you're not Make, uh, you're not positioning yourself as a specialist. And so what I mean by that is if um, you have two choices in front of you and you had a wedding photographer and that's all they did, and then you have another uh, wedding photographer but who also does newborn sessions, maternity, and architecture, I can probably bet some money that the wedding photographer is going to cost a lot more than the person that does in specialize in weddings and does kind of everything. Another example of this is if you go to a doctor and you're going to go to see a general practitioner, the deductible from your insurance is probably like 20 bucks to go see just a regular checkup to go see a general doctor, $20. But if you went to go see a dermatologist who's a, a specialist, right? A doctor who just specializes in skin conditions, you already know that your deductible is probably going to be a lot more, probably in the $100, $120 range, because that doctor is a specialist on uh, what he does. And if you position yourself as the wedding specialist, or let's say if you do headshots, like I am the headshot photographer, that's all I do. I am the, you know, the newborn photographer, that's all I do. People will spend more money, and you as a photographer can demand more money from your clients because you are the specialist. So a couple tips as to how to display yourself as a specialist is clear up your social media and clear up your website. If you wanna specifically focus on weddings and that's where you want the majority of your income to come from, then you really need to only display wedding photography related stuff. So get rid of all of that sports, those bikini shot girls, portraits, all that stuff, you need to get rid of it and just display yourself as, and just display wedding photography related content. We'll talk about this on the second topic, but you only want to display maybe like 10 photos on your website. Display 10 images that you that are really outstanding to you, whatever images you have, even if it's just from one wedding. If you only have one wedding, just display those 10 items. So let's see, we'll just go through my website real quick. So display your best images. And then next you want to display something that has uh, gives you credibility. So if somebody's left a review on your website, then you go down, you let, uh, scroll down, and then we'll have um, a review that's left by somebody so that establishes credibility. And then a like about me real quick, and then a call to action, which is contact me, and then that's it. Don't You don't want to be displaying too much. Make it very streamlined and simple for your clients to contact you through your website. So tip number two as to why you might not be booking the clients that you want or weddings at all is because you're not displaying your business as a luxury type of business or luxury model. So wedding photography is a luxury business. People don't need to spend five, ten thousand dollars on a wedding photographer. People that spend five to ten thousand dollars on a wedding photographer have that kind of money to blow on a wedding. I mean, they they have fifty to hundred grand to to spend on a wedding you know, they're not gonna be asking you for discounts. And if you're marketing to those type of people, 
you you have a better chance that you're just gonna book nice good couples that don't are not gonna give you a hard time and they're they're gonna appreciate your work as opposed to if you're doing a wedding for free or if you're doing a wedding for 500 bucks you know the the couples are they are tend to not to respect you as much because you're a cheap wedding photographer and you're displaying yourself as a cheap wedding photographer and you say well what if I've only done one or two weddings so let's say if you have a, a shallow portfolio and you want to display more work right um, because you've only done one or two weddings how can I demand five ten thousand dollars okay so what you can do is you can do style shoots you can get if you have a good-looking couple that you're friends with get them to dress up and go out to the beach go out to a nice little area and and take an engagement style like a styled engagement type of shoot or get somebody that you have a friend who's kind of pretty decent looking get them a dress get them some bouquet get them all this stuff reach out to a venue see if you can maybe spend 100 120 bucks to rent out the venue for a couple hours and go do a shoot there and build up your portfolio that way that way you can start displaying more work and people will see like oh brendan can do a really good job you know, let's, you know, he's worth it. You need to create value for your, for your couples. They need to see the value of what they're getting because they're going to, they're going to spend a lot of money on you. They need to kind of have that reassurance that you can get the job done when, when it counts. And so going back to the business, uh, the luxury business model is if you, you need to stop displaying your prices on online. Um, Pydrosa does a really good job about talking about and comparing like a Bentley versus a Toyota business model, just the business model. And if you go to a Toyota dealership, uh, you're going to notice that there's um, the prices are like displayed online all the time. Even their commercials, they always display the price. You know, we can get you into a payment of one hundred and ninety nine dollars and people go there and want the like the best deal possible because Toyota displays themselves as a price driven business model. And if you go to a Bentley, if you go to if you go to Bentley, you're going to notice that the lobby is a lot nicer. You're going to notice that they don't display their prices and they're going to only going to have one car on display. Right. And the people that go to a Bentley are not going to ask about the price. They're not going to ask for a discount. They're going to just have the money. Whatever price you tell them, they're going to spend it. And, but with the expectation that they're already getting the best of the best. They're getting the best leather in their car, the best engine, the best rims, the best tires. Everything's the best. And when you go to Toyota, you're going to be asking for a discount. You're going to be negotiating with the car salesman as to how to get the best deal, the best payment, whatever. And you want to display your photography because you're a luxury business. You need to display yourself as a Bentley. So when I go back to talking about what photos you need to be displaying on your website one is you got to be only wedding related because you're a specialist but the thing is you're also creating a limited selection of photos that you're showing because when you go to Bentley when you go to uh, Burberry Rolex all those type of luxury business models they only display a handful selection of of items that you can buy from and so when you're displaying your photos online especially your website you only display a handful of of photos display a couple of things a call to action and that's it don't display your prices online because you're already putting you're already putting your your couples in the mindset of like how they're going to negotiate and how they're going to ask for a discount if you must display your price online then just do a starting price like we're only we're, you know my my entry level package starts at two thousand dollars and that's it and that kind of gives you a little screening as to what couples are like. If a couple sees that and they say, "Oh, Brennan starts at two thousand dollars, our budget's only five hundred bucks," we're not going to contact him. And so that kind of creates a little screening process. But for the most part, you don't want to display your stuff online. You want to meet and sit down with your clients first before showing them the rest of your pricing. You need to establish value, uh, establish a rapport with your couples, uh, figure out what they need. And then once you figure out what they need, then you display, okay, you need eight hours of coverage. You want a bridal session and you want an album. Okay, this is the package that has all that included for $5,000. You need to be the quote unquote salesman and kind of 
you know, and kind of guide them into what would be the best package for them. Because you can't go into a Toyota uh, dealership, let's say if you've never driven or bought in a car before, and you go to the dealership, you don't know what you're looking for. Let's say this is your first time ever buying a car and you don't know what you're looking for. The salesman is supposed to be there. While car salesmen have a bad rap, the salesman is supposed to be there to kind of guide you as to what you're looking for. The salesman asks you questions. What are you looking for? Right? You say, um, I'm looking for a car. It needs to be, you know, automatic and it has to have, I don't know, leather seats. Okay. So you tell the salesman that and then he goes and he shows you only those vehicles. If he's a bad salesman, a bad salesman would just be like, okay, we have all these cars available, take your pick. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would, you, you know, you would, you would think that's a terrible salesman if you went to a Toyota or, or a Bentley dealership and said, look, I'm looking for a car that has this, 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 and this. And they go, okay, just go over there to that uh, corner and there's uh, 20 cars there uh, and just go ahead and take your pick. You would think that's a terrible salesman, but a lot of us do this in our photography, in our photography business, where we just send a price, a price list, a brochure to somebody who's get, getting married for the very first time. They've never been married before. They don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what to expect. And us as photographers, when they, they contact us to inquire about wedding photography, we just give them a list of prices and, and we just expect them to make the best decision. That is bad salesmanship. And so our job as wedding photographers is to ask them questions, what they're looking for, and then we cultivate a package for them and with a price. And that's how you're going to be able to book more clients, book more weddings, because we're there for them and we're there to guide them as to what they need. I hope that makes sense. So before I get into the last thing, uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert in any of this. Um, I just started a few years ago. My first year, I only did two weddings. Second year, I hit like four weddings. But then this year, um, I've hit already 15 weddings booked for this year. And actually, two of those weddings I just booked this last week. And if you're watching this video, I need, uh, you know, a year or two years from now. Um, I booked those weddings during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so the, I think some of the things that I'm doing and the stuff that I've learned is kind of working considering that people are still spending money <laughs> on a wedding photographer during a pandemic. Uh, it just, a lot of the tweaks that I've made and a lot of the mistakes that I made in the first two years, um, I've learned from them, I've corrected them. And this year has been a big improvement and I'm all I want to do from this video is just to kind of just tell you everything that I'm doing um, so you can also book more weddings. It's hard at first. Getting that first two weddings is very difficult. Um, basically, people are taking a leap of faith on you because they don't really know what they're getting with you because you really don't have a lot of work to, to show. The best thing, the best advice that I can give you is to try and reach out to friends. Or, um, or other family that are getting married to try to shoot their wedding. And hopefully from there, you can book your first wedding. Because after that, after you start establishing yourself as the wedding expert, as the wedding photographer, the weddings are just gonna start kind of, really gonna be start being more and more easier to, to book. But I tell you, man, those first two weddings were really hard for me to get. Uh, they were just, it just felt like I was really pulling teeth just to try and get <laughs> somebody to book me. But just stay persistent. Uh, take some of these tips that I'm, I'm telling you to try and, um, and hopefully you can uh, position yourself again as a wedding expert so you can really book more weddings because that's the goal. And that's the goal of these videos is to try and help you book more weddings. Um, so the last tip that I have <clears throat> for you is to really you need to is to put your ego aside and what I mean by that is that I've had people and I've had couples and I've had vendors specifically want to work with me just based solely on the fact that I'm easygoing and I'm, a, I'm easy to work with. Uh, so often that I hear is that there's, there's photographers that, are, uh, that have a really huge ego and they're very difficult to work with and people don't want to work with them. Couples have met with photographers 
um, inquiring about their services and they've positioned themselves as this arrogant photographer who knows it all. And then they go and they meet with me. You know, I'm not bragging about anything. I'm just saying this is what I've been told. And they come and meet with me and they're shocked as to how <laughs> laid back I am and, and how easy I am and flexible I am to work with people. Same thing for, with vendors. Vendors have gotten tired of dealing with that arrogant know-it-all photographer um, and, and prefer to, even though maybe my work is not the best, it's not as, as, as flashy and as big as some of these other photographers, just the fact that I'm easy going and easy to work with has booked me more weddings and has gotten me more vendor referrals, um, which again, leads to more bookings. It all goes back to creating a luxury business model. You don't go to a Bentley dealership and you don't expect the Bentley, de uh, Bentley salesman to treat you like you don't know anything uh, and, and you don't expect the Bentley dealer to be uh, arrogant. You expect a luxury experience when you go in there, right? You're going to go in, they're going to have coffee and sandwiches there for you to eat, sit down. Are you, do you want a water, sir? Do, are you, is it hot? Do you need me to get you a refreshment? All that type of stuff that when you go to a Bentley dealership and you expect to be pampered, you have to do that also with your clients. Arrogance is not part of that, <laughs> which is surprising to me that, that there's still photographers that do that, but um, I guess they, they still exist. I hope that all this information helps you. I think this video is dragged on a little bit too long. And so if you like this video, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this information really helps you. Thank you.